Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking into everything you need to know about Webpack. So if you enjoy these kind of videos, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So Webpack is a module bundler. So what that means is it takes all your different assets, your different files, your JavaScript files, your SAS files, etc. And it calculates the dependencies required to, to run all the files. And then it groups them into basically smaller files or less files ready to be deployed or shipped out. And if that doesn't quite make sense, that's all right. We're going to go into a full example next. So what I have here is a bare bones application. It's just an HTML file, and we're gonna add links to a JavaScript and CSS file after. So I'm just gonna drag over the index.html file to the browser so we can see it. I'll open up the inspector just so we can get an idea of what's going on. And you can see here, we've just got um, a div with an ID of root, we've got an H1 and a list. And this is basically the steps that we're gonna be taking today. So the part that we're on right now is um, why we need Webpack. So let's just um, add a bit of JavaScript and CSS to the application and we'll start to see the kind of problems that we uh, hit. So I'm just gonna add a script tag and that's gonna have a source of source slash index.js. And I'm just gonna refresh this and you can see hello world has popped up and that's of course coming from our JavaScript file. So what you might see in you know libraries or frameworks is they dynamically add HTML into the application using JavaScript. So here we're just creating an H2 node and we can see that uh, here, and we're just adding some text and appending it to the root div. Great. So let's take this JavaScript and let's just assume we're going to reuse this across the entire application. So we're just going to extract this out to a method in a separate file. So how will we do that? So I'm going to create a new file here called DOM.js. And I'm going to take this, I will just uh, cut this and paste it here under a function, call it element with text. Um, and this is just going to take in a tag name and some text. Cool. And at the end, I'm just going to return the element. And I'm just going to make sure that this is using the variables instead of the um, hard-coded text. Cool. So this method works fine. I'm just going to go back into index.js. And let's just do a const, I think I called it element and I'm gonna call the method, right? Element with text. So uh, it's worth pointing out that my um, ID recognizes that you know element with text is available and it tries to use it, but it's not actually available and we'll see that uh, in a minute. So I'm just gonna do h2 and hello world. Cool. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna refresh this page and you can see it's gonna fail, it's not coming up. And if you look in the console, you can see an error. And that's of course because element with text is not defined, right? This index.js file doesn't know about it and index.html file doesn't know about it because it's not being imported anywhere, it's not being added. So what you typically have to do is you have to come in here and say, hey, actually, I also wanna add DOM.js. So now everything's aware of it. But of course, this is gonna import in the wrong order. So if I try and refresh this, we're gonna hit the exact same issue. So now we need to start thinking about the order, right? And this is a very small uh, example, but if you can imagine a huge example with lots of different files, that's gonna get start getting messy. And another thing that could cause issues, if I jump into the DOM.js, for example, and I try create um, a root variable, let's just assign this to document.body, you're gonna see another issue, which is um, scope. So root has already been declared elsewhere. It's not clear um, where it's been declared, but we know that inside index.js, um, it's already been declared. So you can see that this can already start to cause lots of issues. And this is one of the things that Webpack can solve for us. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna refresh this, make sure it's all working fine. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna introduce Webpack and see how that's gonna help. To add Webpack, we're just gonna initialize this project as a NPM project. So I'll just hit NPM with hyphen Y to, to pass on all the defaults. And then we're gonna do an NPM install as a dev dependency, Webpack and Webpack CLI. Cool, so we'll just let that run for a moment. Cool, so now that that's installed, we're just gonna to go to the package JSON and we're just gonna add a new script. And all this is gonna do is just gonna call out to Webpack. And I'm just gonna remove this test script here. Cool, so now we can just run that script and let's see what it does. npm run build. And we can see straight away that it's successful and it looks to have output something called main.js. And if we look in our directory, we can see there's a dist directory with a main.js file in it. And if we look at the main um, JS files, obviously minified, but I can format it and we can see that this is essentially the text from our index.js file. So let's have a look at what happened. And 
the easiest way to do that is to add the default config, which it already has. So Webpack by default has configuration um, and it will look inside the source file for the input. Uh, and basically you're telling it, this is the main file. This is the starting point. Start from here and you know figure out all the other dependencies. And then it also has an output um, directory, which is by default is test and main. And that's where it's gonna output all its artifacts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the default configuration just so it's a bit easier to see. Um, so I'll copy this and this is gonna go under a file on the root directory called webpack.config.js. And all that does is export the, um, the config here. So we have, um, we're exporting the entry point, like I said, source index and the output, which is the file name and um, the dist directory here. And I'm just gonna bring in the path module, which is just part of node. That's not anything that we, um, we explicitly added. So at this point, we've got Webpack um, outputting our JavaScript file, but of course it doesn't have any of the dependencies. So if I update the index.html file, the ideal scenario is we want to add one script, which is a dist slash main.js. And ideally we'd wanna get rid of the DOM and this should all work. If I try to refresh this, of course, it doesn't work because main.js, it doesn't know anything about our DOM.js. Uh, and this is where the import export syntax comes in, which again, um, Webpack allows. So we're gonna go into the DOM.js and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add an export in front of this const. And what this is doing is it's exporting a function with a name element with text. So this is called a named export. You also have default exports and I'll link in the description below the different types of exports and imports um, you can get. And we can go over to index.js. And of course it doesn't recognize the element of text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, hey, import element with text from, and there we go, it's already completed it from DOM. So that's basically told Webpack how to handle that dependency. And now if we do an npm run build, and we run over to main.js and we format this, we can see, hey, look, I've got a bit more code. This has got the code from both the um, index and DOM.js and if I go over to my index HTML file and I refresh it's all working fine and remember all we have now is one import. So now we've added Webpack to the project and by default it's able to recognize the JavaScript files and it's able to bundle those. The next topic we can talk about is loaders. So loaders essentially tell Webpack how to bundle anything that's not a JavaScript file. Of course in your application you might have um, styling files, images, etc. And by default, Webpack's not gonna know how to handle them. So you add a loader and you say, hey, Webpack, when you come across this type of file, this is how you can you know, pre-process it. This is how you can transform it so they can be bundled in along the other JavaScript files. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by adding this CSS file. And typically what you might do is you might go into the head and you might add the um, link here, the rel of style sheet and uh, href of source slash uh, I think it's index CSS. So if we come back here and we refresh that, all we've got in our CSS file is a body with a different color. So you can see that's the kind of the the um, the old way of, of doing it. Um, but if we want to import this into our JavaScript file, Webpack's not going to know about it. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to comment this out from here for now. I'm going to go into our index.js file and I'm going to try import index.css and let's see what happens npm run build and of course it's throwing an error it's saying hey you may need an appropriate loader to, to handle this file type because i don't know how to do that and in order to do that we're going to bring in different loaders and we're going to have to update the webpack config also i've just realized the webpack config is in the source uh, of course it doesn't matter because it's had all the default values but let's move that up to the top of the directory where it should be perfect uh, and refresh this with the spec to back and we can jump into loaders and expand this out a bit. And um, on the Webpack website, we have basically a list of all the different loaders that you might uh, use. So if you're ever using React, usually you'll find a Babel loader, which takes your you know, JSX into uh, ES15. In our case, we're looking for styling. And we'll be using two loaders here, one for CSS. So what this does is it loads the CSS into JavaScript. And then um, we're using the style loader that will take that JavaScript and actually inject it into the HTML file so let's jump into style loader we'll open this up and we can kind of see the config right here so this is the module exports that we had earlier on and now we just need to add this module and rules array and that's going to have all your different loaders 
and the two properties in here are test and use. And what this basically does is it says, hey, test against this regular expressions, um, regular expression to check the file. So in this case, we're just saying, hey, it needs to be a .css file. And then for all these files, use these loaders. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this module. Here we go. So that should work fine. And of course we need to install the different loaders. So we're gonna do it npm install um, iPhone D style loader and CSS loader. So we'll just leave that installed for a moment. There we go. And hopefully now if we just run an npm run build again, let me try that here, npm run build. I'm just going to make this smaller again. We can see that it's been successful. And actually, if we dive into the dist inside the main JS and we format this, if you look across that JavaScript, you will see your CSS in here somewhere. And if we go back to the HTML file here and we look at the elements, you'll see that Webpack has actually injected this style tag with our um, CSS inside the HTML element. Of course, that wasn't part of our index HTML, so that doesn't exist here. But Webpack's handled that for us. So that was loaders in a nutshell. So next, we're going to be having a quick look into caching and then plugins. So I'm just going to expand this, and I'm going to go over to the Webpack site just so we can see an example of this. If you go over to the Network tab and you do a hard refresh, instead of seeing standard name files like main.js or index.js, what you might see is index dot and then a, a hash, a, a mix of characters, .css. Uh, and this is all done for caching. So I've done a hard refresh and you can see that this has come over the network. And if I just refresh this again, this is cached. And the reason it's cached is because of the name. Um, the name of the CSS file essentially tells the browser, hey, I've seen this name before, I've already brought it over the network, so I don't need to fetch it again, I can cache it. So if we were to change our index.js file and we were to rebundle it with the same name, there's a risk that the browser could cache main.js and then every time we provide an update, it's going to stick with the cached version, which it already has because it recognizes the same name. So Webpack can basically help out with this. And this is done very simply by going over to the Webpack config and we can just add different bits into our um, output name uh, for different configurations. So in this case, we can add something called, uh, I think it's a content hash or lowercase. And I think I'll link in the description below, there's different uh, variations and different naming schemes that you can give these files, but this is the one that we're gonna stick with. And we're just gonna run an npm run build again and see what happens. Cool. So we can see now we have been given this main.hash.js. And the cool thing is this is every time I build it, as long as the content hasn't changed, it's gonna stay the same. So that way, if it does cache, that's absolutely fine. But anytime we do change something, so let's just say I add a console.log here, hello, and I rerun this, npm run build, we're gonna see that there's a different file uh, once it loads. Let me just um, reload this with a different hash. So this is of course something that's super useful, especially in terms of caching. But you may have noticed one, one problem in our index HTML file, we're pointing directly at main JS. So how are we able to know what hash is going to generate dynamically? Um, the answer is we don't. And what we can do is we can get Webpack to bundle our HTML file as well. And this is where we get into the world of plugins. So plugins let you customize any part of the Webpack build. So loaders let you transform specific files, but basically any other configuration that happens with the build, is gonna be handled by plugins. Uh, and we can jump over to the plugins page here and we can see that there's gonna be many different types of plugins um, and you can kind of have a look at all the, the documentation. The one that we're gonna look at is called the HTML Webpack plugin. And what this lets you do is it lets you create HTML files and it bundles them for you. So what we can do here is we can do the npm install for the um, HTML plugin. There we go. And again, we're gonna update our Webpack config to include this plugin. So in the Webpack config, we're just gonna add a plugins block uh, with an array, and we're just gonna instantiate a new instance of the plugin. So we're just gonna add it up here, and we're just gonna add the import. I'll just add at the top, const for consistency. There we go. And we're gonna add a bit of um, configuration to this, but for now, we're just gonna see what it does with the default. So if I run an npm run, build, 
we're going to see that in the disk directory, and what it's done is it's created an index.html file, which is great. But you can see that the issue is here, it doesn't have any of our existing um, HTML. But what it has done is it's recognized, hey, you've got a hash on the uh, main JS, so I'm going to input that for you. So what we can do is we can tell the HTML plugin, Webpack plugin, hey, actually use this template instead and modify that template. So what we can do is we can add a options um, object here, and we can say, I think it's template. And again, we're going to use path.resolve. So we'll go to path.resolve, their name. And in this case, we're just going to point it directly to our index.html file. So index.html. Cool. And the final thing we're going to do here is we're actually just going to completely remove this script because um, Webpack is going to handle that for us. So we don't need to. So if I remove that and I try to run an npm run build, And I come back into this index.html file. There we go. So we can see that it has our template, which is everything that we had. And it also has the right script file. So if I drag this index.html over, it's got the right HTML there and it's still injected in the CSS. So everything's working fine. One final thing worth noting before we finish up this video is that Webpack by default runs in production mode. And that's why the JavaScript files are minified. But typically when you're using a library or framework like React, um, you want to run an npm start and you want everything to kind of halt reload for you and update and bundle while you're developing. So Webpack provides this functionality using the Webpack dev server. So we can just install that using Webpack hyphen D, um, sorry, npm hyphen D Webpack dev server. And then what we can do is we can just add an additional script into our package JSON that will do start. And this will just call out to Webpack again. Uh, webpack. This time we're using the command serve. And at any point, even with the, the build, we can do a mode uh, called development. We should be able to run an npm start. And this will run and bring up the webpack dev server. Yeah, there we go. We'll give you the location which is running. So instead of you know dragging the file, etc., we can just go to localhost. What was that? 8080. And you can see that it's it's running here. And as I make changes to the JavaScript, so if I remove a couple of these, there we go. Um, it's hot reloading, it's rebundling everything and everything's working fine. So I think that covers everything that you need to know to get started with Webpack. Of course, there's lots and lots more to cover that I haven't gone over in this video specifically. Um, if you enjoy these kind of videos, let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to do more videos on Webpack again lots of configuration and things that we didn't cover but uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and um, i'll see you in the next one have a good day